Today is Tuesday, September the 27th, 2011. I'm going to document a, a very nice amp made by Macintosh. I think they were made back in the 70s. And I think it's a, I think it's a very much underappreciated and undervalued amplifier. It's a Model 2100. I just got through making some repairs on this one and checking it out good. And uh, I've still got it taken apart. But that's okay. So we can see it. Got, uh, it's got three transistors and three. This is one channel. Three and three, the other channel. Uh, took them out and checked each one of them individually. Cleaned the contacts on the board, etc. I had to replace these, these two pots right here. They had become broken, the plastic inside. This one's got nice chrome on it. Looks pretty good. Got a few scratches here and there, but nothing wrong with it. I can lift this thing with one hand and control it. Got a little oxidation right there. Nothing, nothing to speak of. Got my marks on it for checking it out. Anyway, very clean. Let's look at the specs on this thing. Let's see what it can really do. We'll plug it in. Well, let's plug it in over here so we can control our input voltage. Like I try to do on all of them. There's 120 volts. Okay. We're driving it. We'll be driving it with this uh, Tektronix SG505. Watching this distortion on a AA501. It's our MS voltage output across 8 ohm resistors, which are down here. Two 8 ohm uh, 200 watt matched resistors. I bought more than the two of them and matched them up. Got a thermometer on them even, so that when they get over 120 degrees, they tend to change uh, resistance. But with a the fan, it, they, they stay pretty cool. We'll be watching it on an oscilloscope. Our frequency, yeah, we'll watch over here. And that's it. Okay, we'll start out with, I believe I've got it initially set for a kilohertz there. Okay, 980 hertz. That fan I don't think we need. I'm gonna turn it off, that thing's a little noisy. Let's run it up slightly to a real kilohertz or something pretty close without belaboring it. Okay, so there's our, there's our frequency. There's our distortion at 26.9 volts. Now 105 watts, which they rated at, would be, uh, E would be equal to the square root of WR, which would be uh, 105, eight times square root, which would be uh, 105, eight times square root. I'm gonna get it a minute. 105. There's our 105, enter, eight, times square root 28.98 so we call that 29 volts so we want to run it to at 29 volts both channels let's run it up to to 29 there we go there's 29.0 that's really good 0 0.03 percent distortion at a at a kilohertz that's the left channel if we go to the right channel We get 29.2. We get a hair more voltage, and we can adjust that with the pots on the uh, on the amplifier itself at 0 .02, 0.03 percent. So that's at its rated power. So it really does a good job. Here's its sine wave output, nice and clean. Right channel, back to the left channel, back to the right channel. Okay, so it is at uh, kilohertz. Let's run it down to uh, 20 hertz. Yeah, 
There it is, 20. 20 hertz, 29.2, so we're still running at 29. There it is, 0.04%. That's on the right channel, I go to the left channel. Still 29 volts, 0.03%. It's just, it's absolutely marvelous. It's just a really romping, stomping amplifier. I got some loose connections in here though, I know that. That's what causes it. It's one of my goofy output here. That would have been one of my curses. We can see it's not changing up here. There we go. Left channel. Right channel at its rated output. At 20 hertz. Let's go up to 20,000. There we are at 20,000. Haven't changed anything. The voltage dropped a bit, down to 26, that's the right channel, left channel, about the same, but a little bit higher. So we're going to, it takes a wee bit more to drive it there, we can see that. So we're running it back up to 29 volts. Or something really close, we don't have. There's 28.9, at 0.02%, left channel, right channel, 0.01%, 27.8. So to adjust that, we just go back down here and uh, tweak one channel at a time. There we go. So there's the right, there's the left, and that's at 20 kilohertz. So we've tested it from 20 hertz, uh, kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. The thing just does marvelous. I've worked on many of these things. I own one, I use one. And I think they're great, and they're only four or five hundred bucks. So anyway, I'm not trying to sell them, but I'm just uh, I'm just trying to document them. There's this nice sine wave, two channels. Let's see what it'll do. Let's go back to a kilohertz, one K, and let's see where it starts clipping. Okay, there's 31 volts. We're going to crank it up until it clips. There it is, it's starting right there. So you can you can see the wrinkles on the tops, it's clipping severely now. There it is, 1.6% at 32 volts. That's the left channel. There's the right channel, 33 volts. That's up at 5%, but see, that's clipping pretty hard. We'll have to back it down a little bit. We want it at about 1%, where it just barely starts to clip. Let's go back to the other channel. 0 0.09, that's about as close as we probably can get to 0.1. Or less, we, we're going to run it close to 1%, that's right. There, whoops, 1%. There we go, that's close enough. 31.8 volts. Can't quite see it clipping yet. With a little imagination, you can see a little wavering at the top and the bottom. So 31.8 volts, and it's still below 1%. And uh, 31.8 squared 8 divide is 126 watts. And both channels are operating at the same time. We always want to do that. Here's our left channel. Here's our right channel. Right channel's clipping a little bit more. So we could, uh, we could back it down and adjust it slightly. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm adjusting the, the controls over here to match them up. So anyway, it'll do 100 and 125 watts at one below at one percent or below, and uh, it's rated output at 105 at whatever we measure, 0.03 or 04 percent. It's just a marvelous amplifier for the money. Like I say, I think they're very unappreciated. There's quite a few of them out there. They don't have the fancy anti-clipping stuff that uh, some of the other ones do. They got the barrier strips for the for the uh, speakers and uh, nothing fancy. It just works forever. There's really nothing major wrong with this one, but uh, the customer wanted it cleaned up, checked out, made sure it was working good. And like I say, th these two pots were cracked inside, so I guess you could call that somewhat major. But the transistors, every one of them, I pull out and check individually. It's perfect. Good amp. Hope you enjoy.